as the body is, why well, I say talking to you, as you're having pain, as you hold the pain, it's not because our bodies are betraying us and saying, you know, I'm sick and tired of you walking on these knees and my knees are killing me. There's reasons why that that is happening. And if you understand what it is, uh, you can move through it and work with your body instead of feeling like it's letting you down. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth, where I talk to artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, my very own Aunt Diane. Yay! Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, we've been talking about this for a little bit now, and we've also been toying with the idea of you starting your own podcast. I'm really excited about that. So this is your first uh, podcast appearance, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely the first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome. Um, Thank you. We talked about this the other day. Sometimes it's hard to describe what we do. The The quick turn of what you do is deep tissue massage, but I know that it's much more than that. Right. So could you kind of give uh, the people an overview of kind of what? what you do and the <clears throat> scope of everything that you provide for them? Mm -hmm. um, so what I do that's a little bit <clears throat> unique for being a deep tissue massage therapist is that um, I've been given a God-given gift of being able to uh, find stuck energy in people's bodies. And when my hands travel there, often um, the stuck energy has something to tell us. And so as I reach those spots and I start asking questions about uh, what are you noticing here? Because I definitely have opinions or, or kind of hits on what it feels like to me. Um, it allows people with their stuck energy. Usually it's a perpetual stuck energy that they struggle with and they don't really know why is it constantly uh, reappearing, you know, and they stretch, they do all these kinds of things, but typically uh, something that continues to reoccur has everything to do with uh, something that's going on with them emotionally. So um, I help them get to that depth of what it is emotionally. Um, what's something that <clears throat> you would say is like happens? I mean, a lot of people have maybe neck problems mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> or uh, lower back issues. Uh, what's something that people like that comes up a lot that people might not realize that it's more in impacted or affected by their emotional life and kind of that, you know, energistic side than just the fact that they're you right. know, staring at a computer all day or whatever. Right. Um, I I work on so many people, and uh, I would say that uh, although sometimes I'll have a uh, a week that's just filled with neck issues, shoulder issues, something like that, um, and other weeks there's nothing but feet or nothing but uh, knees, and um, I think it's more for. Um, for me to have the benefit of seeing how many different ways that people can have different kinds of emotions in those different places. And those, you know, so if everyone's having a neck thing, not everyone's having the same particular issue, uh, rather than just saying, I have a stiff neck or I sleep, my pills terrible, you know, whatever it is. Um, no, sometimes it's a matter of, um, for the neck issue in particular, uh, lots of times when there's stuff going on, in the throat, in the neck, it has a lot to do with our ability to communicate what is uh, we struggle, things are difficult to say to other people. And yet, if you recognize the difficult stuff that's hard to say, um, and you're able to say it, it no longer has to be stuck in the throat or in your neck. So if you're willing to be um, say the tough things. It could be to your boss. It could be to uh, a sibling. It could be to a parent or, you know, someone who you just want to, maybe a neighbor who you just want to stay friends with and you, but they're driving you crazy. By saying the truth and trying to keep it in I statements, the motivation to do that would be so you don't have to carry it in your neck and you don't have to have it be literally a pain in your neck that you go like, well, this is how it feels to be me. This is really a pain in my neck. And I want to let 
you know that this isn't working for me. And just by doing that frees up the neck from going like, this was really driving me crazy. And, you know, being hard on yourself and having to hold other people's stuff. I know, I know a lot of a big part of what you do is like having like the, a very thorough understanding of anatomy. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll come back to the deep tissue and energy healing side of things. But right. um, was the first time you really got a sense of anatomy? Was that when you were studying for equestrian school? And, and, and what was that? Like? That that Yeah, when I was studying right to uh, be um, a vet assistant at the time. Um, yeah, anatomy is um I find it so fascinating and just like um, the mechanics of every muscle crosses over a joint and it, it's moving or it's, you know, it's affecting, uh, you know, so we can be so um, diverse in our movements and depending on how exact we get, it's how we develop those muscles. The The fact that I've, you know, had so much anatomy um, in, in that field and then going on to, to begin and to get my uh, massage license, uh, massage therapy license from that kind of anatomy, we started focusing more on people. Um, again, I kept seeing these similarities, but truly it's a matter of um, this instinctual thing that was given to me that wasn't even there. I mean, I've been doing massage since I was a kid. And uh, when my brother was, you know, doing some crazy moves, water skiing and hurting himself that he'd be like, you got to work on me. And I would, I've been doing it forever, you know? So to me, the, it makes a lot of sense, but the muscles was how you hurt them and how to release them. It's like something that's, uh, you know, I may have done it blindly before becoming licensed, but, um, but it's always been there. Yeah. Was there a moment or like a, a time of your life where you realized that maybe you had something different or that you realized that you were kind of, you had something that, other people just had no awareness of or interest in or ability. Yeah, that's like one of my favorite stories to tell about when I first recognized that um, there's something uh, above and beyond what most people can do. And it, it go, I'll try to be short about this, but <clears throat> I worked on this woman. I was fairly new out of massage school and I was working deep in her abdomen and um, I was working on a muscle called the iliac psoas muscle. It's, the deepest muscle within your body. And um, anyways, I'm in her abdomen and I'm working on it, I'm stretching it, she's got lower back issues and I'm trying to release all that stuck energy in there. And, and as I'm working at her, all of a sudden, clear as day, about two or three feet in front of me becomes this image of a porcupine. And I'm like, what the heck? Now I like the, I like the woods. I like nature, I like animals, and I'm like, why am I thinking about a porcupine? So I'm like, focus on what you're doing. So then I like, okay, blow that away, focus on this iliac psoas muscle. And I go back into it, and boom, right there in front of my face again is a porcupine. I'm like, stop, like focus on what you're doing already. So I kind of brush that aside, and I go deep into this muscle, and I'm like concentrating on what I'm doing, and also on porcupine. And so now I feel like a horse's butt in the fact that I'm going to ask the most dumbest question, but I won't be able to get through this without having this porcupine interrupt my work. So I ask my client on the table, does porcupine mean anything to you? And she says, yes, it's what my family calls me. She says, they say I'm hard to get close to, and I'm very prickly around them. And I realize that the fact that I see things like that is something that not everybody does. So um, so instead of trying to push it away, I actually started moving closer to that and understanding that this is this is part of the gift. But there's no really <clears throat> there's no real way to to describe what you do because I mean, do you really have peers or contemporaries in that do exactly what you do or like how close do other people get? to what you do? Um, I've never met anybody who can do what I do, but not that, it's not to raise me up because I, I feel the same way about each person has a gift that I don't have and I can appreciate it so much recognizing that we all have gifts and it's not to, to try to make myself 
bigger, better than anyone else. Absolutely not. But it's the fact that I recognize what my gift is. And I also want to honor the people around me and what their gift is because it's just as important. And it's just, I just been wanting to do a podcast because I wanted to let other people know that, you know, as the body is why I say talking to you, as you're having pain, as you hold the pain, it's not because our bodies are betraying us and saying, you know, I'm sick and tired of you walking on these knees and my knees are killing me. There's reasons why that that is happening. And if you understand what it is, uh, you can move through it and work with your body instead of feeling like it's letting you down. Yeah. Um, even pre-massage therapy, mm -hmm probably going back to when you were a kid, when did you kind of have a sense of energy and uh, fourth dimension? You know what I mean? The spiritual realm and the spiritual, because I, I know some, this is a preloaded question. Like, yeah, because you know those. Yeah, well, what, what, what were some of those like early childhood? Memories of yeah, that? Yeah, of, of, of that ability. energistic ability, yeah. Um, I, like one of the earlier ones is when I was a about two or three years old and I'm hanging out to my mom's hand and we're walking down the street and um, I could clearly see in this my our neighbor's yard uh, a big like oak tree just a magnificent oak tree that was holding its leaves it's summertime and it's just brilliantly like so like majestic and I could see the aura of the tree dancing and it was just swaying and it was so happy it was a it was getting everything it needed. It was getting its water. It was getting its sunlight. It was just happy. And I pointed that out to my mother and I said, oh, look at that tree, it's, it's dancing. And she said, like, Diane, that's just the heat off the pavement. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, the pavement's over here. I'm looking at the, the, the side lawn and uh, recognize that not everyone can see it. And that was a little surprising. And uh, now her mother, did see stuff like that and so i was able to talk to her so it was wonderful having an adult be able to confirm the things that i could see and, and explain to me why some people can't and some people can't what was her answer or why would she say that some people can't um it, she says it's like a matter of it uh, jumps generations it's her explanation and that um and i'm not sure what what the reasoning is of jumping um generations because I would also say that my daughter has a, an ability to, um, although I don't think it's as developed as what mine is, but um, but I've caught her noticing things. Uh, and one in particular, I, I saw um, a ghost and she was, my daughter was talking, Julie was talking to me and saying uh, something had happened to her during the day. And she just, ta -ta 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 -ta, and I was gonna say to her, hey, do you see this ghost? As we're driving and she just didn't take a break in her conversation. So I was just like letting it go and letting her talk. And all of a sudden she stopped mid sentence and turned and stared at the ghost that I was looking at. And then she completely picked up where she left off and continued to talk. And when she was done telling me what she was telling me, I said, did you notice a ghost that we just went by? And she said, uh, no, I didn't see it. I'm like, you absolutely stopped talking and stared right at it. And she says, I, never saw it so i know she has this ability she just doesn't know it uh to where i i know it yeah um so i mean other people that have this kind of ability might go on and have it be like the main focus of their career or their craft right but um i think it is interesting that again, like kind of the the background in animals and anatomy is such a like a grounded thing about the mechanics of how the nervous system and the skeletal muscular system, they all work together. Um, but then like I, layered on top of that is that energy right. system, right? Right. And so for you, it's kind of, I, I want to say like second secondary or like supplementary to your craft or your trade True. So, which i think was what maybe what makes it so unique um because you're not like a medium right not a medium no yeah. um you're you're helping people with their physical anatomy right and but help. then releasing some of that 
breathing into uh, stuck areas or, or through stuck right. areas. And then, right. yeah, I know that when you work on my neck or whatever, shoulder back, you can actually take a deep breath in. Mm-hmm. And then as you're like applying pressure and energy, right. <sighs> when you release your breath, you can actually feel this lump kind of exactly. move or dissolve. Kind right. Of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and I do spend, um, I want to say quite a bit of time, but really, once you get it, it's not quite a bit of time. It's like, it's either, it's kind of like either you get it or you don't. And um, I often will start with a a client. I just did this this week with another new client. And I was saying to her, like, I can, I could hold a spot and have you breathe into it. And to show for an example, I was working right next to her scapula. And because it's easy, it's like right next to the lungs. And so, someone who doesn't work with the body can say, well, yeah, I can breathe there because it's right next to my lungs. And so I'm holding a muscle that's completely tight and, and stuck and then teach them how to breathe into that and then um, and then exhale it and then, and then take a breath in. But having it with intention, you're bringing the breath through the heart and bringing love and light into that breath. And you're focusing on where my hands are touching the body and you're pushing the um from inside you're pushing towards my fingers and with the love and light that's hitting those it's like an acceptance of the pain it's a huge thing because now you're no longer fighting your body you're now saying i'm interested enough to know what the pain is that we're holding here and trying to be gentle and soft with um a concern for where are you in pain and you're saying that to yourself, to your body, because it's a, a communication between the, basically the mind that has all this kind of judgment and the heart that just like wants to be open. So you're kind of trying to negotiate a communication between those two places. And once you understand how to do it, like at the scapula, say, you can then get them to do it the lower back. And that they go, really? You think I can breathe down that? I'm like, yeah, you can actually breathe all the way down to your toes. But and I know because you and I have worked together and you're such a good communicator and you listen and and follow direction and you trust because you are so open. I found it like super easy to teach you how to do it. Super, super easy. But other people have this like this stop about it where they uh, get concerned that um, like this, like you can't breathe down to your knees and like, oh, yes, you can. Yeah. And, but you know what? As I say, you know, if you think it's it's not possible, you're right. It's not possible. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when people do respond to it well, mm. um, they tend to become like lifelong. Oh yeah. Friends and clients. And, Very much so. Um, can you tell, like, maybe what's ex- what's the farthest somebody's traveled, or uh, some like extreme example of a, somebody that you've know, had them for a long time or uh-huh. whatever. <laughs> so I. I moved for about a year uh, from Pennsylvania, and I moved to um, Oregon. And I had this one client who was as faithful as can be, and he's like, I I cannot live without you, which is not true. You certainly can. (laughs) But anyways, he said he used his vacation time to come to Oregon to uh, clear across country for me to work on him. And I worked on him every single day. Just because you know it's his vacation time for one thing, and then um, and then he would you know go back home, and then you know about six months later he'd have another week's vacation, so he'd come back out and get worked on for another seven days, and uh, you know and I'm like I, I totally understand that you know I have people who who travel like right now they travel about 200 miles uh, at least once a month to come see me, and. Um, when I was living in Pennsylvania, I had people from New York State come down and get worked on. So yeah, it, it happens a lot. Yeah. Um, is this something that you think um, <clears throat> other people could learn how to do? I think so. And I th- there's a, um, I was just describing this to someone. The fact that I'm putting my hands on someone because they're, they're coming to me saying I'm stuck and I want to move forward through this. And all kinds of information is um, uh, laid out for me to see. And if a person says, I don't want, there's a part of my life I don't want you to be 
uh, going into that. Uh, Investigating. Uh, yeah, exactly. Opening up these yeah, like Pandora's box. Locks. Please. Right. Yeah. I have no, uh, I, I feel like that's a violation and I would never, ever do that. If there's a thing where someone says, I don't know why I'm in so much pain, but here it is. Can you help me work through it? Then, yeah, then I, I go there and I'll be like, what about this point? And, you know, what do you feel about that? Because you could, the body will tell you who, where, what, when, <laughs> what's going on if you really want to hear it. And if someone's fearful about exposing what that is, then um, then probably you don't want to see me. Uh, so can I teach someone to do this? I I believe I can, although I've never tried. But I believe it's this is like when um, uh, couples have an affair or or are inappropriate somehow, whatever. I think that when you're with the, the uh, your significant other, and you put your arms around them, and you realize there's something different here. What is it I'm feeling? Um, they don't know, and there's and because the other person isn't prepared, like how would you know that there's anything there at all? Um, they don't know what it is they're feeling because they've not spent hours and hours touching other people's bodies, understanding the vibration and what it what it's telling you. So, I think that if you know if anyone ever wanted to learn it, it's a, where, a matter of uh, having uh, the opportunity and um, and being open to to have it be anything, anything, everything. This, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't feel like you're under the light and you're interrogating Never. somebody and no. it's like, tell me your deepest, darkest secrets. Never. You know? No, but um, but because it is kind of uh, an opportunity uh, uh, to open up and it is therapeutic. Right. I mean, I mean, literally in massage therapy, but also in an emotional sense sure. um, without naming any names. Can you think of any weirdos? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like people that fell in love, or is there uh, anything like that? Uh, fell in love? I wouldn't call someone falling in love a weirdo. You mean <laughs> fall in love with me? Did you say? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, because people often do that. Men and women will both, you know, tell me they want to take me home and all that. But that's and it's really what it is is that they fall in love with themselves, and so it's you know. But that's not being a weirdo necessarily. It's just that it's a it's a wonderful thing to be able to recognize and appreciate. Um, being open and I encourage people to be open yeah so because of that they, it's a very it just feels so loving and it's it's a, a our nation of starved people that are feeling disconnected that's what I was gonna say there's I mean a lot of this physical manifestation probably comes from a lack of right. love and acceptance so like you're the a lot of times the first one that's being that right. allowing somebody to get that open with themselves so exactly yeah so people respond to that right yeah yeah and then they in the fact that they know that they can trust um and certainly if someone says they come in they go like what do i have to take off i'm like you don't take off anything if you don't want to because uh, it's not that's not it but typically when you, once you've been getting work done uh enough times people just come in and like you know i step out of the room they strip down you know, they'll always have draping on them. So they're never exposed. But it's funny because when you start recognizing that you want to uh, really understand what are, is it you're holding, you know, what the heck is that? It's kind of like, I don't want any barriers. And I'm like, I'm fine with that. And they just, you know, lay down and they put a sheet over and then they say, I'm ready. And I, they come back, I come back in and uh, work on them. But it kind of makes me laugh because this is the same person who would wear, you know, jogging pants instead of, uh, you know, and I'm like, okay, you know, I can work with that. That's like, that's okay. It just makes me laugh because when you first fear, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? What am I going to find? Now they're like, go at it, Diane, go find it. You just tell me what I you find. I want to hurt tomorrow. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, my agenda is not to hurt anybody. I just, but if you go like, I want some deep tissue. I want this to be worked on. I'll give you one other one. You didn't necessarily mention it, but you're almost touching on it. And I want to share this with you is that um, there are times when people have been, um, have life experiences that go way back to when they're like really very, very young. And I've worked on people who have been therapists and who have who are really accomplished, um, you know, uh, social workers and whatever, right? Uh, people who are doing this for a living, and 
it's interesting to me that they, uh, this one person in particular I'm thinking of, she had, had uh, been a, uh, a very accomplished therapist for like 35 years. And I was working on her and I recognized uh, when I put my hand on her, right above her knee, I was working, she's face up and I'm working on her. And I all of a sudden uh, got this big waft of sweet tobacco smell. And I asked her, I said, who is it that smokes sweet tobacco? And she got like, went from being in a Zen place to being like, you know, like, like the Hulk, kind of like, wow, just went completely the other direction. And she had told me that it had been a relative who had uh, molested her. And, um, and she said, I, I, I've worked on this for years. And she was like, I'm so done with it. I'm like, yeah, but the tissue still has memory. And that's what we're addressing. And though, and so we're just going to that place and going to meet that, um, that spot and uh, let it release. And so we kind of go back to where you're just a little kid. We're going to be there. I'm going to be holding your hand through this terrible time and uh, and help you navigate through it so you don't have to hold that memory any longer. So when she was done off the table, she was like, I feel like I could float out of this room. Yeah. So she did allow you to take her to that vulnerable yeah. place? Yeah, because she already knew I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unlike um, maybe some, not even contemporaries, but something we talked about the other day was mm -hmm. that you have like this ability to, well, not not compartmentalize, but you don't take on these this energy. No, you are able to like, leave it mm -hmm. at the door and release it or ground it, as you say. Right. Um, <clears throat> how and why is it so important? Um, it's important for the client. It's also important for me um, because, uh, like, for instance, take the the energy that was being held in that tissue of that last example. Um, she doesn't need to carry it any longer, and it's certainly not mine to carry. And so I look at it more like um, something that's, you know, decayed. That Like uh, if you look at a compost pile, that the value of that is to say uh, this once – was nurturing. This was like maybe something from the garden, and then you're like, okay, we're done with it because this is all, you know, it's, it's past its prime. It's all done. And we throw the, we discard all the, the nutrients, whatever, that go back to the earth. And so I recognize that you know someone once said that, yeah, but isn't that polluting the earth? I'm like, earth doesn't see it that way. The earth says that these minerals and such they have value. So it's like, you know, ash to ash and dust to dust and all that. That whole circle of life is supposed to go back if we recognize that we're not trying to harm the earth, and we recognize that the the pains that we carry are so intense and so true, and we're you know, sometimes even in uh, siblings, like they uh, grew up in the same household, one finds the situation perfectly sensible and acceptable, and the other person feels violated and hurt. So is either one of them wrong? Heck no. The one that's feeling it and carrying it and is feeling despair about it, that that part needs to be met and recognize that it's, you know, all uh <laughs> decompose crap from childhood that you carry let's just take that and then put it back where it belongs in the earth and and try to make sense and be as a mature person who is you know had my own kind of you know pains and, and growth and all that and meet someone where they have been stuck in theirs and show them how to navigate through it in order to be um send it back to the earth to move forward and um, and then let it nurture something else and let something good come out of that instead of being spiteful and mad about what has happened in the past. Is there a religious or spiritual element to this or does it depend on kind of, does somebody's belief system affect this at all? Positive or negative? Mm, that's a really great question. Um, knowing that I was raised a Christian, 
Um, I also practice being a Unitarian Universalist. And I also, in that, you know, some of my closest friends are atheists. And to me, it, it makes no difference of how you come into this world and, and how, you know, what brings you onto my table to, to work on this stuff. It, that makes no difference at all. How a person um, tries to negotiate um, their own growth is the language that I try to pick up from how they express it to me. And, you know, you and I both know that like, because our Christian background, that, um, that how when we have a, a dinner together, let's say, when we say our, our prayers and our meals and whatever, that, you know, we say God. But I also, uh, around a ton of people, it's like a higher power or whatever. I never would have take my religious belief and throw it down someone else's throat. So I guess the answer is like it has nothing to do with religion. Although I got to say for me, my gift is something that I consider a God given gift. That is, in fact, I would say that um, my um, ability to do this is 100% all that, that I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to do what I do, that it's not even something I just think that I've got a connection because of my life experiences that have um, made me very aware of God in my life. But again, just because I've had these huge experiences of recognizing if it wasn't for something greater than myself, I would not be here. And I can tell you like like five, I'm not going to today, but five major things that have happened that I should not be here that uh, only by the grace of God or my guardian angels or whatever that all is have made sure I stuck around. So um, so for me, it's clear for me that it's, um, uh, it's something greater than myself, it's God or something, but I don't want to spin it like it's a religious thing. Well, for me, like, I think it's like having a, a foundation in religion and like specifically Christianity for me is kind of an, a, a way to align myself. Mm-hmm. It's like if I go off the path, you can go back onto the path. Mm-hmm. Well, like that could look like oh, yeah. chakras or whatever. Sure. So, so your your energy gets out of whack. You have a way to bring yourself back centered, and when you've got this kind of path forward, mm-hmm. you can realign yourself versus just wandering blindly, right? Right. Um, so I think for like a client, um, I, so for me, it it, it helps. Mm-hmm. I bet for a lot of people, there's a lot of hangups around that, you know, blockages and stoppages there. Absolutely. Um, and then, and also, I kind of wonder um, because I, I don't know, because of the, the fact I have seen ghosts and, uh, you know, several times, and uh, they're, they're just around us and they don't scare me and I feel so protected. And like I said, I, like, I should have died like at least five times already. And uh, the fact that I know I'm around is because I'm supposed to be here. And I'm supposed to be doing something greater than myself. And and I can only do something greater than myself if I pray about it because that's my method, it's my, my way. But it doesn't mean it's right for everyone. But for me, I ask for guidance. I ask for um, support. And um, I feel like I get it. And I get like all this stuff that, you know, like we talked about the laws of abundance, right? And some people would say, that's not God at all. That's, you know, you're now doing mystical stuff. But like, no, to me, it's like all one and the same. It's um, it's recognizing there's something greater than ourselves that are that are at work that are helping us because you know, like just like if we help one another, we help we are helping ourselves too. And when we get out of our own head, we get out of our own depression when we're helping others. So you know, if we don't recognize that there's there's stuff we're supposed to be out there doing. If we sit there and flounder and, you know, can't get out of our own way, you know, all we can do is try to, like, lift those who need love around them, around us, and, um, and um, you know, which helps the whole. Yeah. Yeah, they say, like, uh, like love is the only thing that the more you give, the more you get, right? Right. That and head lice. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just came up with that. That's really good. <laughs> but uh, your vision for this podcast, I mean, yeah, I think it's really cool. I think it's it is unique and it's something you could 
have the opportunity to share it with the world. What's your vision for what Going that could forward? look like? Yeah, I do the my best work when I actually have my hands on people. So I'm picturing um, having people allow me to record them. Of course blurring out their faces or even, you know, to whatever degree that they can be recorded. And uh, because it's when I touch my hands on their shoulders or neck, their back, their knees, their feet, all these things have different messages. And while you're in session, um, it's so organic in the way that um, I have no agenda. I just go like, well, where are you feeling your pain? And where can we start from there? And then, uh, and then you might say, "Oh, I feel it all in my neck." Well, it could very well be that um, the thing that you're not necessarily saying has a lot to do with uh, what's happening in the home. It could all be around hip stuff. Let's say I'm totally making all this up, but anyways, it would it could be someplace completely different than where you think. And so, but when I touch the neck, all of a sudden I get the oh no, we should be at the hips. And so I'll go down into the hips, and I think that whole process um, would make a lot more sense um, if it was being recorded live, or not live, but would be recorded as what a session looks like. Because then I think that more people will understand it, more people can relate to it. And if they go like, you know, yeah, I was thinking that my all my issues were in my neck or all my issues were in my hips or whatever. And it turns out that, well, Actually, maybe not. Maybe it's more over here, and this is the reason why. And yeah, that there's, it just opens it up so clearly. How can people follow you, learn more about you, get a hold of you? Maybe yeah. you know, come experience a session themselves. Yeah. Well, my my office is actually in Saratoga, New York. My telephone number is five one eight three zero six eight five six five. I respond best to texts because when I am in session, I don't pick up my phone, I don't look at my phone. Um, so if you text me and you uh, make reference to that you're interested in, in receiving the work and possibly uh, being uh, recorded and being a part of my podcast, I would be completely thrilled with that. Yeah. In upcoming episodes of The Creative Truth, I'm going to be talking to more artists, entrepreneurs, and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Uh, if you have questions, episode feedback, or guest suggestions, you can email me at wecreatetruth at gmail.com. I got a spreadsheet. I just keep putting people's names in there. Um, and if you're listening on iTunes, please leave me a good review. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell so you know when new episodes come out. We're going to be doing a couple more episodes this season, and then we've got some other big stuff coming down the road. So thanks for listening. Thanks, as always, for your support, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.